Hey, what's up guys? Um, welcome to the Shadow of Moldor tutorial. Uh, I'm Alexander Dolagrosh and this is my second script on Gumroad for 3ds Max. So without further ado, uh, what does the script do? Let me just quickly show it. Uh, you can commit a shape and we kind of get a preview of what the mold is going to kind of look like. We can edit some stuff and let's just quickly create a mold to kind of give you an idea. So in a matter of seconds, uh, I've created this mold here and we have these connectors. So when we print this out, it would fit perfectly in real life. Yeah. Um, so before we continue, I'd like to go over some of the the, the kind of uh, requirements and kind of kind of the the problems you can uh, find with the script. Um, if you have trouble, please don't uh, rage at me like I paid for this, um, because there's a couple of things you need to pay attention to. Just like when you're 3D printing, you need to pay attention to a couple of things. Um, the script does its job, so if you have like invalid booleans, there there should be something wrong with your mesh, and you haven't followed the following steps. So what are these things? Um, well, just like with 3D printing, um, this Shadow of Moldor script doesn't accept um, meshes with holes in it. Well, it will accept it, but it will give invalid boolean. So for example, let me just create a teapot because that's what 3D artists do. We use teapots to show you uh, uh, things in 3D. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so let's just commit the shape and create the mold. And then we can see that um, we have a weird result. Um, it doesn't look the way we expect it to look. So uh, just make sure your mesh is closed off. As you can see, the teapot is, is full of uh, open areas. So it needs to be a closed mesh. Then um, only polygonal meshes. Um, this is, for example, an STL I imported, which is fine, but um, it needs to be converted to an editable mesh or editable poly, so convert to editable mesh, editable poly. Um, using, for example, NURBS uh, won't work. Uh, it, it will give trouble because the, the Boolean is a, an editable mesh operation. Uh, so make sure it's a mesh. Um, and then when it is a mesh, uh, again, watch out with the holes, which you, for example, can have is uh, let's convert this to an editable poly. Let's close you for a second. Um, like sometimes you're not aware of it, but uh, your edges might be broken up. So for example, here I have this vert. Let me just move it. And you can see it looks closed at first sight, but actually the vertices are not welded. So this can be a problem. Just make sure verts are welded uh, and, and we don't have any issues uh, with it all right so uh, yeah the welding of stuff um, then uh, only with polygonal meshes uh, who have no end guns um, it works when you have end guns in some cases but the script has trouble interpreting a shape that isn't defined by uh, triangles or quads so try to have uh, three corners or four corners when you have more the script can sometimes give you uh, unwanted results so I actually notice quads are the best. Okay, so uh, yeah. Then um, another thing, um, we can, for example, use the turbo smooth. Um, we don't even need to collapse it. We can just commit the mesh. But when you use the turbo smooth, make sure easel line is turned off. If it's turned on, the script will give weird results, and it's not the the results you might want. So make sure it's turned off. If you have any further problems, um, you can still contact uh, the poly count discussion forum and I'll try to answer them as good as possible. But this is, for example, the Zebro base head, which, which is just a perfectly fine close off mesh. I use the script on it. So uh, and this is from uh, Martin Hagen, another artist who created this uh, for 3D printing. So um, I, I use it on other people meshes. It works on their meshes. So if it doesn't work on yours, Check it out. I, I know how these 3D things can go. So just make sure uh, everything is fine. OK, so um, yeah, let's perhaps show what the script can do. Um, so I've summoned Shadow of Moldor here. Again, another pun <laughs> I use in my scripts. I like to name them uh, after games <laughs> or movies. Um, so excuse me. 
All right, so we have this head here, and um, there's a turbo smooth on it. It has three iterations. You can iterate it like pretty high, like um, like the highest poly counts I've been able to make a mesh from is uh, like eight million. It took me like ten minutes or something for the script to finish. Like when I create the mold. Uh, because there's so many polygons, it looks like Max is not responding, but it's actually doing all the work behind the screen, so just give it some time. Um, and <laughs> like 8 million is a big mesh when I use, for example, this is, uh, I think this is uh, 200,000, 1 million, that's, that's all fine, that's all easy. But once you go over 10 million, the script um, can give problems and sometimes the, the boolean will fail. So. That can happen if you go over 10, 12 million. Um, it can work um, sometimes as well. You just need to give it time. So just when it's boolean, like a large mesh, um, just give it some time, watch football or something. Like you see, like this just goes pretty quick uh, with a simple mesh. So let's just preview this with a bit of a den denser mesh. I won't speed up the video so you can kind of get an idea of uh, how fast it is. So let's just create or commit this shape and as you can see we have a duplicated mesh uh, from our head here and uh, we have these boxes here which kind of uh, preview the mold uh, dimensions and everything and we can change this around a bit. What I actually want for this mesh is actually to have the mold um, like have the, the cut in the middle so the mold goes sideways. Um, to actually do this, we have to uh, rotate the original mesh. So th the script will always be oriented like this. Um, there's no option in it to rotate it 90 degrees just yet. So for now, just rotate the mesh 90 degrees, commit the shape, and then we can see the, the, the mold has changed its uh, size according to the mesh. So um, the, side, the size is actually depending on the growth percentage. So if it's, for example, at 0%, we have the exact same dimensions as the head has. So for example, if I uh, up the growth percentage by 50%, we will actually have uh, the, the size of the head uh, increase by 50%. Uh, and then this can be like, you can move it as far as possible. You can see the connectors move along with it. So I think 50% is fine. Um, and then the second uh, option is actually where you want to cut it. So if I, for example, want to cut the mesh over there, I could, uh, and this is also working with a percentage, so 0%, 100%, it doesn't go any further than this. So I just want to cut it in the middle, so 50%. And at 50%, uh, we can then look at our connector settings. So we have two connectors. Uh, one are spheres, one are cylinders. Uh, you can actually use both. So let's just go over one by one. So first, the first connector settings. Um, you can turn them all on and off. Uh, the script won't be like, hey, you don't have any connectors. You can just use it to create a simple mode. But if you need these connectors, just turn it on. You can change the radius here. Move the offset inward or outward. This is based from the corner points of the mold can change it like this, uh, that's fine. And then we can, for example, up the scale. Uh, if you want to, for example, have more of a, a long shape uh, and, and change up the density. And like you can combine these and create some cool uh, like shapes. For example, if we lower the density to three or zero, we'll go any lower than three um, or zero. And then we have actually these kind of cone-like shapes and these work fine as well, actually. So. Yeah, um, and then when you're 3D printing, a lot of times when you have something that has the exact same size, uh, it doesn't always fit. So I made sure I put in a scale difference. So you have uh, the negative shape that's a big better, a uh, big a bit bigger, sorry, uh, than the uh, outward uh, piece. Okay, so you can just put in some scale difference. Let's look at the second connector. It's kind of the same setting, so we can change the radius of these cylinders. We can uh, offset it more inward, have the scale, move it more like this. Uh, with the density, you can, for example, change it to uh, uh, pentagons, hexagons, uh, squares. So let's just 
leave it as a cylinder for now. Um, and then I'll also play around with the scale difference. Yeah. Um, then we have uh, our cup. Our cup is where we pour in the material we want to create uh, this object from with the mold. So uh, this cup can be also be turned on and off. If it has effect top enabled, it will only affect the top piece. If it is disabled, it will affect the bottom piece. All right. So I'll just have it affect the top piece. Um, and then we can, for example, change the radius and also change the density if you want to, for example, create like a triangle shape. You can do this as well. But let's also keep this round. Um, and then we can be like, OK, this is fine. We have all our connectors, but I'm not satisfied with the position. For example, over here we have this uh, connector, which is dangerously close to the mouth. You can move this so you can, for example, move this can create the mold and it will be moved and everything's fine. Right? So that's pretty cool. Um, you can change shapes uh, afterwards. So um, I do advise when you change things around like this, uh, you don't, for example, then change the radius because if I change radius, see how it snapped back. Um, yeah. So make sure you have uh, everything set up the way you kind of want it and then you can move stuff around. Uh, for example, this cup, I'd like to have the head uh, be the material be poured in more on the, the head side of uh, the object so we can just move it here and uh, if, if you'd like we could actually even model kind of a chamfered state here to have an easier pouring time so for example if I take the cylinder I convert it to an editable poly uh, and then I take a swift loop like this I can actually just scale the stop parts up like this. And this will actually give me kind of a cone shape. So an, an easier place to, to pour in the material. All right. You can even like rotate this if, if you really need to. So you can actually even do this. Um, but I'll just leave it like it is right now. Um, if you're like, oh, the mold, the, the height needs to be smaller, we can change this around. These are actually just primitives. Uh, you can freely move and then when you're happy with the result um, we can just say create mold and I'm not going to speed this up so this kind of gives you an idea um, just create mold and you see it's loading it's doing its work you can kind of compare it to ZBrush uh, see it's it says it's not responding but it is actually is it's kind of like ZBrush Dynamesh sometimes when you Dynamesh like a large mesh it seems like ZBrush is not responding but it's actually just doing the work and, and moving the algorithm. Um, this, this is actually what uh, Shadow of Moldor is doing right now. So uh, there we go. Um, we have it here. Um, so let's check out the results. Yeah. So I use a lot of connectors and it's a bit overkill for this piece. Um, and this is just smoothing group issues. So the, the, the geometry is there. So if you would 3D print this, this would be fine and you can see the scale difference here so you see the the outward part is uh, a bit smaller than the negative part and we have kind of this variation so you're sure that when you fit this on uh, each other in real life the, the the mold should be fine so let's take a look at the quality of the mold we just created so see how well of a job it, it did um, so it's just move this to the side and this is actually pretty cool um, but if you look at it from a top view you can actually see kind of like a, a head moving uh, in 3d but it's just a negative shape so it's it's pretty trippy to see the effects of this script and uh, I think it's pretty cool so um, that just shows the quality of the script we can take a look at the, the polygons and he just tried to rebuild the mesh that we gave it and he did a pretty good job for example, over here, it seems like he didn't make this all quads. I don't think this will be a big problem for 3D printing. Most of the time he does this since it's already uh, kind of a flat shape. So then the script didn't think it was needed to add a polygon in there. All right. So yeah, that kind of shows you uh, what the script can do. You can use this in your workplace. Um, I, I hope it helps people out with uh, this kind of stuff. And if you have any ideas for updates, 
Uh, the updates, of course, will be free, but I, I won't guarantee anything uh, in the near future because I'm going to make an update for Band of Brothers first. Um, but yeah, if, if you have ideas, um, be sure to post them on Polycount or if there's really, like, if you have an issue with anything, uh, like installation wise, you can just post it. And if you have made a cool, like, work or you create a mold with the script, uh, feel free to, to send me pictures and, or post them on the forum. I'd be happy to watch them and see the script actually used in real life. Okay, so um, thank you guys. Um, if you've bought it, uh, if you haven't bought it, thank you as well. Uh, uh, just like, uh, thanks for the support uh, that I had with the last script. I really appreciate it. And let's just keep this thing going. So thank you and see you next time.